call the March 12th, 2018 work session meeting to order. This is work session of the Portsmouth City Council. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Clark? Here. Mrs. Lucasburg? Here. Mr. Moody? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Dr. Whitaker? Present. Mayor Rowe? Here. Dr. Patton? Yes, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of City Council. Tonight, we will continue the FY19 Strategic Budget Initiatives with the following presentations. Our first presentation this evening is the FY 2019 Budget Community Engagement Results. On Thursday, February the 1st, the City hosted the Community Engagement Budget Session for our citizens. The polling exercise is not a scientific survey. It is simply a tool to measure the pulse of our citizens regarding budget areas and services. Mr. Brian Casey, budget officer, will provide an overview of key polling results. The second presentation is an overview of the Capital Improvement Program. A Capital Improvement Program, or CIP, is a short-range plan for over a five-year period which identifies capital projects and equipment purchases, providing a planning schedule and identifies options for financing the plan. The City of Portsmouth Capital Improvement Program supports projects that improve the infrastructure and economic development needs of the City and Portsmouth Public Schools. The CIP developed annually is an opportunity to define needs, set priorities, plan funding, and to protect the financial stability of the City. Mr. Brian Casey, Budget Officer, will provide an overview of the Capital Improvement Program. The third presentation is an overview for establishing the city's other post-employment benefits known as OPEB fund through the Virginia Municipal League, Virginia Association of Counties. Mrs. Ann Seward, Interim Chief Financial Officer, will present. The fourth and last presentation of the evening, members of council, you will be a review of the FY 2019 budget strategic initiatives presented during the January 22nd public work session that has framed the discussion for over the past four public uh, weeks public work session. We're only 12 days from tomorrow of uh, remaining before I, as city manager, will present the proposed FY 2019 budget on March 26, 2017 at 4 o'clock p.m. in the City Council Chambers. Mr. Casey. Thank you. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council, tonight I will highlight the results of the budget community engagement forum. <clears throat> on February the 1st, the third annual Portsmouth Community Engagement Forum was held in City Council Chambers. The purpose of the forum was to provide the citizens of Portsmouth with a more transparent budget process. The forum began with an overview of the municipal government budget process and key financial indicators for success presented by our city manager. Following the presentation, the interactive polling session began with five demographic questions and 12 strategic questions, allowing our citizens to contribute to the FY 2019 budget process. The poll was also available on the city's webpage, and hard copies of the polling questions were also distributed to our citizens. A total of 718 citizens participated, and I will highlight some key takeaways. The full report was provided to council and is now posted on the city's webpage. 35% of respondents were between the ages of 50 and 64. 73% of respondents had no school-aged children. 19% had kids in Portsmouth Public Schools. 30% of respondents were from the 23703 zip code. 24% were from the 23704 zip code. 77% of respondents said Portsmouth Public Schools needs improvement. We asked our citizens to prioritize the following maintenance areas most important to them on a rating scale of one to five, where one is not at all important and five is very important. The highest ranked maintenance area was traffic lane stripping, 
or striping, followed by sidewalk and curb repair, followed by arterial and collector road repairs, followed by pavement of neighborhood roads and pothole repair. Potholes was last? Yes. <coughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> We asked our citizens to rank the following services in order of importance on a scale of one to five, where one is not at all important and five is very important. The highest ranked service was leisure services for youth and adults, followed by community engagement, followed by operational infrastructure needs, public education, and public safety. We asked our citizens to prioritize the following areas based on their effectiveness in improving neighborhood and community quality of life on a rating scale of one to five, where one is not at all important and five is very important. The highest ranked area was citywide beautification, followed by community engagement, followed by efforts to remove dilapidated structures, adequate street lighting, and quality of police, fire and emergency service. Isn't that interesting? And finally, 56% of respondents said no new tax increase. 19% said one cent tax increase. 11% said a two cent tax increase. And 14% were in favor of a three cent tax increase. Who are these people? <laughs> well, go, if you go back and look at the, um, go back to your first slide with the Just Democrats, that. look at the Short age. And the age. Right, look at the age. And the area. Uh-huh. So 35% were between ages of 50 and 64. And they don't drive around any potholes. Right. And when we look at, um, when we look at the school age population of parents, um, if you go back, go back, Mr. B. You look at, you would say anywhere ages would, for parents would be 20, all the way up to about 50. Yeah. For school age children. And so the highest percentage of people polled had, had no children in the schools. But isn't 718 people responding a lot more than we've had in previous no. years? Actually, last year was a little under 1,000, yeah. so we had less this year. And, and we advertised both um, online and, and Port City and other places. We even um, had the um, Virginian Pilot ad. Yeah, we, we um, tried to do a multifaceted advertising campaign because, of course, everybody doesn't receive the information the same way. So we did online to try to catch the millennials because we knew that they probably would not come to the survey I and mean, come to the actual event, that they would probably go online and take the survey. So we did several different advertisements on Facebook, Twitter, and we also posted information on Nextdoor, which is our newest um, social media site that we have. We did uh, advertising board on um, PCTV. We did print advertising in the Bridges publication, but we also did something in the Virginian pilot because when we were getting ready to do it, there was no space in the in the uh, Bridges. And so we decided to go in the pilot because that's more mainstream. So we did a a lot of different advertising, a lot of different methodologies, and some of the things I hear from some of my colleagues in other, series, in other cities, it's just that when you're trying to reach the millennials, because of the fact that they're, they don't have their patterns of conceiving information is not the way that we do, it's always a science trying to figure out how to get in contact with them and try to, how to get them to come to these particular things. But we think that a lot more people, millennials, went online. And of course, we were trying to make sure that we um, contacted people that had school-age children. That's where we need the other questions. Just so Dr. Patton mm -hmm. may have asked it before um, last time, if, if this is a non-scientific um, approach, then what is the purpose, what's the conclusion we're supposed to reach from this if it's non-scientific? Well, we, we said it was it was a polling, and, and it's non-scientific, which means it gives the public or the citizens an opportunity to respond to those questions, how they deem they feel about the questions. We, we um, uh, have found that um, polling and getting people's opinions through such surveys during budget, budget time does give some insight of, of what people's thoughts are. Not that we are comparing or, or, um, or, or approaching it from a, a, a scientific survey, 
Um, so this gives people a, a time to a opportunity to participate. Well, well, is, is there some particular reason why we're not approaching it from a scientific perspective? We had just uh, we had not thought of of uh, approaching it from a scientific approach. So, for example, how do you control for whether these are actually Portsmouth residents? Because they well, it, I mean, you have to put your your um, zip code in there, and if it if if it's not your zip code or your correct zip code, um, I think it would kick it out. So these. I mean, but I could put in a zip code and not be a portion. Well, you president, could, but so. if you're being untruthful, you could. Well, well, I'm we, just saying, but you're right. So yeah. it's it's not. I don't know what to conclude from this. Well, um, we because you have um, persons who is, is skewed significantly. For example, based on this, to people who don't even have children in public education. Right. And so when you have a ranking of, I think it was uh, slide number um, on page eight. You so page eight. You, you go, go to, to page, page eight. eight. Right. Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah. Is it page, it's, on well, mine is page eight, it says public education. Uh, we have the full report. This is summary. It's summary. Do you have this report, or right. do you have the full? What so on uh, our PowerPoint. This is a summary of what the. Full this isn't the full report with the 17 questions. This is. No, I'm looking at page eight on the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Okay. It yeah, has public education. I saw oh, it. There you go. Um, it's, it's different. No, it's not. It's another one. It's the one that has. Um, you know, I think you, you it's on our PowerPoint. Page eight. It has public education 2.4. Yeah, you have the full, the full presentation. This is a summary. Yes. You had it. It's the same. All of yours say page eight. Well, <laughs> because his is a summary. This, this is, is a deep. summary of what you have already received. This is not the yeah, full 17, was, 19 right. pages. Okay. Okay. Well, this isn't either. This, this is not, this isn't 17, 19 pages. I don't know what you're looking at. Um, Dr. This was the only school slide that we had in this presentation. We had two school questions in the full report. This should be that, but it's yeah, yeah. This is, this is what I'm talking about. It has 2.4. Page, page six was about the school age children. The page um, numbers that are in the handout. Everything out after page seven is yeah. page eight. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so slide it over. Somehow or another, they are all off. I guess move, move it to one six. more frame. Uh, next frame. Three. Next frame. The other, no, no. other that right? The other way. Just that one? No. Go Keep again. One more. One more. That's eight. One more. One more. That one. Should be the same thing. Is that one? No, next one. That's there we go. Okay. So when it says, um, please rank the following services in order of importance, and you have 2.4, public education mm -hmm. is next to the last. Mm -hmm. So what are we supposed to conclude from that, given that the uh, respondents, I believe it was 70, over 70% 70 of them don't even have children in public school? Right, and what we are, what we are trying to do from um, engaging as Mr. Um, because what the citizens will take this and say, well, public education isn't a priority. But that's not, that's not the scientific conclusion from this. No, it's not a scientific conclusion, but it is a, a polling. And those who participated in the poll, which was 728 people, expressed uh, what their thoughts were in the range of the questions. Right. And if those seven, 70 percent are anti-education, then you would expect to see. Well, I, I couldn't say, Dr. Whitaker, that. That's, that's the, why I keep raising. Yeah, why, I couldn't say that keep, they why do are. You keep presenting um, non-scientific. I could not say that those us. who presented are anti-education. I, I can't make that I'm leap. I, can't, I, I don't know, and that's why that's right. the danger of presenting non-scientific data publicly. Right. right. Well, this is just a polling process. I, okay. Somebody else had a question? Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, our next presentation will be a um, uh, snapshot of our capital improvement program, an overview of it by Mr. Um, Casey.
Mhm. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, tonight I will highlight the FY 2019 Capital Improvement Program. <clears throat> the Capital Improvement Program, also known as CIP, is a five-year plan that addresses the procurement and construction of capital assets, as well as ongoing city infrastructure needs through replenishment and replacement projects. The CIP's first year is the only appropriated year in subsequent years provide a plan for addressing future infrastructure needs with projected expenditures and resources. CIP is programmed into nine specific program areas that encompass every component of the capital improvement program. The program areas are consistent with standard GFOA practices and are similar to cities and counties throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Capital planning is critical to water, sewer, transportation, sanitation, and other essential public services. It is also an important component of a community's economic development program and strategic plan. The CIP development team reviewed and examined over 80 existing and future capital projects, which align with city council's adopted vision principles and the city's financial policies. Listed on the screen are some of our ongoing CIP projects. First is the Churchland Bridge replacement, which has 35.5 million appropriated to date, of which 21 million is VDOT funding. The seawall replacement project is in its third phase from Admiral's Landing to the North Inlet. The sanitation sewer overflow elimination program reduces the overflow of sewage into Portsmouth's sanitary sewer system. Low pressure transmission mains, which convey water from the Lake Kilby water treatment plant in Suffolk into Portsmouth. Stormwater projects, drainage facilities repair, and lake management. Additional ongoing projects include the city fiber network, which will allow fiber connections to all municipal buildings, including schools and libraries. The Truxton Fire Station, is in the design stage. Portsmouth Public School Bus Replacement Program, which provides $1 million per year to replace 10 school buses annually. And the Churchland High School HVAC Project, which consists of urgent repairs and a newly designed piping system. Listed on the screen are FY 2019 requests, which include Effingham Street Improvements, at the Naval Medical Center, which expands Effingham Street from the gate at the Portsmouth Naval Medical Center to Crawford Parkway. Department of Social Services HVAC replacement. This is to replace the rooftop mounted HVAC equipment. Fuel stations reconstruction at Churchland and the Operations Center. This is to replace outdated fuel pumps in the chip reader system. Next are CIP requests from Portsmouth Public Schools, which include the design and construction of a new middle school, Mount Hermon bus loop upgrades, which lack a designated area for buses to load and unload students, and the Churchland Academy parking lot, which will provide adequate parking space and alleviate congestion. Any questions? Yes, you go. On, on the expansion of uh, Effingham at the uh, from the medical center to Crawford, mm -hmm. are there any federal funds available uh, for that? Because that certainly uh, helps uh, alleviate the traffic congestion going into the medical center. Uh, have, have we explored that possibility, uh, Mr. Moody? I cannot answer that at this time, but um, Mr. Wright um, has, is, uh, will be here tomorrow. He's just returned from a trip overseas, and uh, I will have that information for you. I know that there will possibly be some monies that we can get from the state, but I'm not sure on federal. I think the federal piece is to the gate, 
from the, federal. Ga from the gate inside the barrier school. That's right, from the gate inside, but not from the gate coming out into the city. So that's why I think it's state yeah. funding, but not federal. Yeah. yeah. More than likely that's the case, but it uh, doesn't hurt to ask. Oh, yeah. You, you never know. That's right. This is the additional lane for going in. Right. Yeah. Cutting in the park. That's right. So we definitely will follow up and get you an answer. I mean, that, that benefits anybody working in the medical center more than it benefits mm -hmm. citizens yeah. not going there. Right. Can you have, Mr. Wright, just give us a, um, a diagram of tomorrow? I definitely will have that tomorrow. Uh, but both what's happening before the gate and after the gate. All right. We can have that for you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, two more questions. Sure. What is fuel in Churchland? What is what? What is fuel okay. in Churchland? The fuel oh, pumps. Oh, the fuel pumps. Where do we Churchland have? Churchland and the operating center. Um, at, we have a fuel station. We have a fuel station um, out by Churchland High School, and we have a fuel station at our compound. I, I knew about that one. I didn't right. know about the one in Churchland. The, Chir okay. the one in Churchland has been there since the construction of the uh, new Churchland High School, in order to alleviate when it was placed there, city vehicles from having to come all the way back across oh, the bridge. Uh, and fuel. Great idea. <laughs> you, you never seen it? I didn't it? know it was there. <laughs> okay, it's been there uh, since I think 93, 90, I understand 94. those pumps really run slow too. That's probably why they need to be addressed. Yes, Mr. Moody, um, if you, and you you would have no reason, the pumps that are at the, um, the compound or the wind it up as if, you know, long time ago kind of pumps. So we definitely need to, some of them are, to upgrade that entire area. On the school buses, uh, ex explain what's going on with the school buses. Are we under a mandate, federal uh, compliance mandate, to replace buses, or is this just something that uh, we, we got some older models that we... The, the, the school, there is no federal mandate for school buses. The, the state um, is the um, entity that uh, determines um, um, the, the process for school buses. Um, since I think 2014, um, the, the, the agreement, or I would say agreement with the schools, was that the, through the CIP, the schools, in order to get their fleet updated since they were not in the CIP prior to that, uh, that the city would um, contribute a uh, million dollars toward the purchase of 10 buses. Um, in this budget for this um, uh, calendar year, fiscal year, uh, the buses have already been ordered. In fact, they were, uh, they are ordering 11 because they had some funds that um, were unexpended in that capital fund to make the, to in, in order that they could get 11 buses, but they have been ordered. Uh, yeah, that's in our current budget, though. Right. Okay. In the current budget. Right. Right. But these are these are proposed in this budget. Okay. Uh, the question um, has been asked um, of the superintendent: Does the number need to be 10 every time? And so that is information that will be coming forward. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Comments? All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Uh, Casey. Uh, oh. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, Mrs. Seward will come forward now. And I sent you an um, email earlier today in regard to um, the city's um, OPEB and um, uh, the need for us to have established an OPEB fund by June 30th of this year. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council. Um, just a couple slides to talk about the city's OPEB. Um, it stands for Other Post-Employment Benefits, and so the words there, when we say post-employment, that's our retirees. When we speak about other benefits, um, clearly it's not their pension. These are health insurance in the city of Portsmouth, um, and our need to establish a trust to hold some investments towards this uh, liability that we have. 
So I'll start off real quickly with just a little bit of history about OPEB. Um, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, which is a board that provides national guidance, actual national requirements for localities to do certain reporting in their, in their financials, um, they came out with a statement back in 2008 called Statement 45, and that required loca local governments and all government entities to report the financial commitment that they have towards post-employment benefits at their true cost. This was a bit of a wake-up call to many governments because one, we really didn't know how much that number was, and then two, we had not begun in any mechanism of, of beginning to pay or set aside funds for that. So when that requirement came out, a lot of localities were scurrying about as to one, how are we going to pay for this? And now that this is being reported, we have, uh, we're getting questions from rating agencies as to how are we accommodating that. So um, the funding, uh, the recommendation was to fund this liability uh, annually. And to do that, we would actually be able to set aside funds that would grow and invest and then reduce the liability that we have by as much as 50% over time. Um, and when you invest in a trust, it not only lowers the cost, uh, it also can generate a higher rate of return through your investments um, because you're able to put those funds away for a longer period of time. It improves as well the city's calculated um, liability from the actuary. We actually have a company that does this calculation. Uh, the number ends up in the CAFR every year and they say how much it's going to cost the city to provide these benefits to our retirees. Um, it also can, re can result in a lower annual required contribution. They call that an ARC. And this is the amount of funds that we should be setting aside each year in the budget to kind of whittle away at that liability. So VACO and VML, Virginia, Virginia Municipal League and the Virginia Association of Counties came out with some solutions to help localities in Virginia. And they developed the first pooled OPEB trust and actually still the only pooled OPEB trust in Virginia. And so that was created in 2008. Um, it is one of the largest in the nation. It's open to local governments, school divisions, authorities, basically anyone who has a governmental purpose. They currently have 46 local government members, and I've listed here some of the ones in Hampton Roads that you may recognize. Virginia Beach is, is um, probably the largest. Um, they also um, organize the same, they're organized the same as a pension fund. So much like you have your pension board here, that's how this pooled trust program works. So what are the benefits of the VML VACO pooled trust? Well, you get to share the cost with all the participants. So that administrative cost is not being borne by one locality. It's being spread across to everyone. It's also very easy to participate in it. They've really streamlined the process and they've given a lot of um, standard um, ordinances and contracts and things that you need to use to, to get into it. You have the ability to access the top tier investment advisors, mainly because of this large pool. There's a lot of funding there, so you can access probably the more sophisticated investment folks in the industry. And more investment choices and a higher expected rate of return on those investments is because of, of the size of the pool. It also, um, they have diversified por portfolios that you can choose from, which has less volatility, again, because of the size of the pool. So what's the city's current OPEB position? Well, we mentioned that this really goes back to a 2008 implementation, and currently the city has not established a trust, nor do have we made any investments <coughs> to date. Now, in the current budget, in the fiscal 18 budget, you all did set aside $3 million to go towards beginning this initiative. So that was a first step. Um, the annual required contribution, that amount that, that gets computed that we need to set aside each year in the budget is $2.8 million, so the $3 million is right there at that number. Um, and that again gets calculated every two years for the city, so that'll be updated and will change just a little bit with each calculation. The city's liability as of your most recent audit report was $75 million. So the retiree health benefits have been adjusted over time to kind of mainstream those benefits with the other communities so that they're not as rich as, as um, what most localities provide. And that will, in the future, kind of reduce that liability as well. So I would hope that we would see that number come down a bit. So for our path forward here, we have four major steps that we would need to take to join into the VACO VML pooled program. The first of which would be council would need to adopt an ordinance just agreeing to participate in the program. Secondly, you would need to appoint a local finance board to serve as the trustee. And in communities that have a pension, a pension fund, it's typically use the same board because they're doing very similar um, services. 
And then third, you would need to execute a, a trust joinder agreement, which is actually going to be done by that local finance <coughs> with the VML pooled program. And then lastly, we would need to select our investment portfolio. So as the next steps for how we can move in this direction, um, the city attorney will be reviewing the ordinance and the contract documents that are required by the VECO VML pool program. We would look to put an ordinance before council uh, in April of 2018. Once those documents are adopted, then we would move to make our investment before the end of the fiscal year. <coughs> and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Questions. What determines the, uh, the ARC? So much like with your pension, they look at the number of, you know, unfortunately people pass away sooner or later, so they're trying to guess how long someone will live, how long they'll need health insurance, and then basically what kind of claims experience they, that pool will have. So it's going to change a little bit every year as your number of retirees and then your claims experience changes. So um, it's, a, it's kind of the industry's best guess of how much money it will take to pay the bills so basically. Who, who calculates that? It's a third party administrator. I don't remember the, the name of the company that we use here, but it's a separate uh, company, much like we do with the pension, and they do that calculation every two years. It's a third party. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and also on the uh, uh, participants in the state uh, plan, e even though we're in the pool with other cities, our our return and, and our investments are handled independently? Yes, right. exactly. You get the benefit of being all together, but your money is kept separate. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So the fact that you have to invest before June 30th, 2018, mm -hmm. will that be 2018 monies or is that encumbered monies? Does it have to be actual or encumbered? Well, those are the dollars that you all set aside in the budget. And so we, we have those monies. We need to get them invested in the trust before the end of the fiscal year. That's 2000, the current budget. The current, the current fiscal year, budget. yes, sir. They, right. Yes, sir. They will, you approved them. Okay. Uh, Lisa. Yeah, um, because we didn't um, invest or start the plan in 2008, it's been 10 years. Are there any penalties or any catch up? plans that we'll have to... No penalty, but that $75 million figure would likely have been a, a lot less. So the sooner you start, the less you have to put aside because your money will earn money. So, you know, we're a little behind the gun on this one. Um, so I would just say start soon. Um, as, as soon as you can, fund that, that, that ARC every year, the annual required contribution, and uh, we'll monitor it and, and hopefully get that number. That $75 million will come down quickly. Bill. Can uh, school systems participate in this as well? They can, yes. Okay. Chesapeake, put, that, put the uh, frame back up so you can see those that are in Chesapeake school system is in. And they're Newport Right there. Yep. Go back. Uh, yeah, Virginia Beach, oh, okay. Suffolk, Chesapeake cool. schools, and Newport News schools. Oh, okay. So is our school system uh, going to participate? I cannot answer that. They are, have a uh, separate trust. Um, they are not in uh, VML VACO. Other question? Yes, sir. Do you know if the um, school systems, uh, Chesapeake, Newport News, are there cities also in uh, VACO? Yes. Um, so Virginia Beach City, Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia Beach City, and Suffolk City. There's a long list. They've got 46 different ones, and they're pretty large communities. But what I'm asking. So it says Chesapeake Schools. Uh huh. So it's the city of Chesapeake. The city was not listed. No. Right. And yeah. so Newport News. The city schools. was not listed, but the schools were. So yeah. the city is in some other fund? Yes, they must be. I'm not sure. They may have their own. I don't know if they have a pension, if they ever had a pension fund. Or so there, there, are, there are cities that see some benefit of having the city and the school in separate. Well, some, some, some had to implement earlier, and VML VACO came out with this program in 2005. Eight. The requirement actually began in 2000, I mean, 2008, Eight. 2005. So some of them had to move faster than others. And this pooled program was not announced at the very, very beginning. So that could have had something to do with the decisions that they've made. Yeah, but I'm just saying, but they, they are existing in separate trust the, funds. They're in some trust, I would yeah. suspect. I would have to pull their CAFR and see. Um, well, by, by, by law, they have to be by June the 30th. 30th. Well, and so we haven't done it yet, so I can't speak whether they have, but okay. I, could, I could check that for you. Yeah. There's a um, 
trust, board of trustees for the overall trust. Yes. Correct. Yes. Who appoints that? Uh, I think I read it. So the VACO VML trustee board, they actually vote amongst themselves, and it's weighted towards the size of the locality. Okay. So I think they have a nine-member board, I read. Um, and I think the representatives, Virginia Beach is one. So the, the participants pick the trustees. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then there's a requirement for a local board, too. Yes. yes. And that is where you all will come into play. So you will need to adopt an ordinance saying that you want to get into this pooled program. And then you'll need to appoint a board of trustees to basically be the contact person, which what I would recommend is since you've got a pension board, they're already meeting, they're already serving that purpose. It, it, that would be a, a, a good way to go. Dr. Patton, this eliminates all this conversation about joining with the schools and whatever. We get rid of the politics of all that and just join with the other <coughs> municipal Correct. government entities. Yes. Is that right? Yes. We will. We are proposing, and, and the request is before you, um, to go with VML VACO and move swiftly so that we will be in place by June 30th and, of this and year. take advantage of the yes. big one. Yes. Any other questions? Solid. No question. Okay, well, um, everybody feel comfortable with this? I, I think it would be okay to kind of give a nod. I think it's the best way to go. Yeah. 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 Well, with that, can you all start preparing the ordinances yes. to bring back? Yes, and we're working with legal also. And, and, yes, sir. And Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the City Council, we can provide you. I have a, a dated print out, but we can provide you a list of the localities that, that are joined, where the uh, that are part of the pool. It will demonstrate uh, the question Dr. Whitaker shows that those localities where the city and the schools are in and some localities where one or the other might be in the pool as well as it will identify the trustees uh, who are in, in the uh, pool as of this point in time. And I would assume too that that list might have authorities like the Hampton Road Sanitation District Commission? It does. Okay. It does have. I saw quite a few authorities. It does. It, uh, uh, Newport News Redevelopment and Housing Authority, Henry County Public Schools, Henry County Social Services, um, uh, Roanoke Schools. So it, it, it's a number of them. All right. We have we'll another get question. There too. What, what advantage is it for the municipality of the school system and the city uh, is in it jointly? versus independently? Mm -hmm. Well, from a financial reporting perspective, they're always going to be reported separately. But there is an advantage. The larger the pool you're in, the higher your return on investment. So when you go off on your own, um, I mean, I, I don't have the data to, to talk about this, but probably the investment returns are a little higher when you're in a big pool because you have a larger amount of money and you get to access some of those higher investment um, you know, brokers and, and, the, and the, the investments that they have access to. Is the ARC less? No. So your ARC is going to be less the better your, your trust is performing. Mm -hmm. So if it's performing really well, yes, you're going to see your ARC go down. We're going to be in a multi-billion dollar fund. You're going to be in a yes. large fund. A three million. Yeah. 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 Right. Instead yeah. of three million. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be in a large fund and uh, you'll have the brain trust of a lot of localities mm -hmm. looking at this and um, I, I think that you will be well taken care of. I think, yes, How are those particular trusts insured? I, I can get that answer for you, but I'm sure they are. Thank you yeah. very much. Good Other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Got a lot of nods around the table. Yeah. So yes. Yes. please proceed. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of, of council, um, I'll wait till she pull it up. For Since October of this year, um, the <coughs> city's team, finance and budget, have been working toward the 2019 uh, budget preparation. The budget process is not something that you can start um, six, three months out, two months out. It's a continuous process of, of um, involving and um, visioning and discussing 
and monitoring the budget, the current budget that we are in. Uh, on January the 22nd, um, I presented to you um, the strategic budget initiatives. And over the course of January till today, which is uh, March the 12th, um, the presentations that we have been coming to you with and, and discussing and getting your nods as um, snapshots or overviews um, takes us to this is the last meeting that we will have that actually um, addresses the strategic budget initiatives uh, until our, my presentation, uh, which is uh, March the 26th, uh, and that's um, 12 days from uh, tomorrow. I know which way do I go? Okay. Um, for the past um, 931 days, and uh, today is my 191st day of my third year, we have had one mantra that has guided us. And um, I was um, quite uh, pleased when Mr. Holt uh, called me before he made his presentation and said, Dr. Patton, I'd like to use that mantra because I've been work using it with my team since I've been in the position. And that is for us always to review and to refocus, to review, reflect, refocus, and restore. Uh, just not make decisions because something comes before us, but to really think about it and talk about it and see what is best as it pertains to uh, financial acuity for our city to go forward. So we have held firmly to the four R's over the two and a half year period. Uh, we framed this particular budget uh, theme around economic development because we all know that economic development is the driving force behind all that we want to do um, as it pertains to growth um, and, and vision and the future of, of this city and any city. And under uh, this overarching theme, I had four areas um, that we have been working. And um, those areas start with the first uh, education. And all of us know that um, education is the, the best investment we can make and one that pays off in countless dividends for our children, our society, and our city. And if we hope to maintain or improve the quality of life in our communities, attract new industries, and continue to prosper as a community, uh, excellent schools are con essential, and preparation of uh, our future workforce, uh, which are um, our youth that are in our schools today. And quality public schools help to make localities more economically competitive and influence residential property values. Um, workforce development, and <clears throat> we presented to you both internal workforce um, aspects for this budget um, and external. And um, our external was presented by Mr. Moore, where he um, made it very clear that um, businesses, businesses and corporations, who, small or large corporations, who are looking to come um, into cities, um, are now asking, what, what, what is your workforce? What people do you have here that can do the kind of work that we are looking to do? So we have some things proposed in both of those um, uh, uh, in, in the, this proposed uh, budget. And we know that um, uh, workforce development will not only enhance Portsmouth, but also the region's economic stability and prosperity by focusing on people and their connectivity to successful businesses. And it is imperative that we focus on preparing our citizens as well as attracting and retaining employees internally, as well as attracting employees to provide for the workforce of the future. And um, we have used a, a holistic approach in both looking at the internal and external workforce, which are all aligned with City Council's four big things. Um, continuity of investment. Um, 
I cannot tell you um, how our future is going to be driven by technology and information uh, technology. Um, just today in um, a conversation with um, Bob Crum, who is the executive director of um, HRPDC, uh, and we were talking about broadband, the broadband initiative where uh, our city is with uh, development of our um, uh, plan, uh, which would connect to uh, the broad uh, broadband initiative and those, I'm going to call them platforms, but Mr. Um, Jones would um, call it the correct uh, name, which will be coming off of the coast of Virginia Beach and preparing ourselves so that we can be able to con have connectivity. Um, we also um, have started with your direction from the um, city council retreat on the Crawford Gateway revitalization strategy and moving those um, initiatives that were presented to you forward and looking to move um, even further as we uh, enter into uh, the 2019 uh, physical year. And um, we've also talked about uh, a housing strategy um, right now, we do not have a uh, housing strategy plan, and I shared that with you um, in the initial January 22nd, and that still remains something that um, we are fo we are focusing on. Um, and tonight, we. Uh, shared with you our recommendation. You've given us this thumbs up uh, when I presented it on the, t the 22nd. There was the uh, OPEB piece there that was um, kind of dangling, but now we have clear direction how to go. The money is there, approved in 18, and get our funds set up. Um, and we are constantly looking at unique financing opportunities and remaining financial con conscious because as we look forward to the future, uh, 2019 and beyond, it will take um, just a astute financial consciousness to move in the direction that you as the elected leaders um, desire to move the city forward. Um, I'd like to say to, um, and I said this uh, at doing the January 22nd presentation, that there is so much uncertainty that we as um, cities face from both federal and state. Um, I said to Mr. Ashby uh, earlier today that every time you look around, someone is trying to adjust uh, as it pertains to something that may be a part of something that a city or a county are to receive, and you know you expect uh, the kinds of um, things that are are um, that that automatically come to us. But there is always that inkling of this may change, or we may not get exactly what is it e expected. And with federal and state legislative changes, uh, we must seek alternative funding sources for existing services, programs, and increase the cultivation of public-private partnership opportunities. Definitely continuing to look at debt structuring and using one-time funding and maintaining financial consciousness. And uh, due to the looming uncertainty of federal and state legislative budget decisions, we potentially redirect our local uh, funding choices, and we have to do that just um, very um, consciously as we move forward. Um, so over this budget process, I'm working in 12 days from proposing to you the FY19 budget, um, we as the budget team have held steadfast to ensuring uh, the protection of this city's financial resources and um, to um, continually uh, work toward creating your vision of um, your four big things and the new Portsmouth. And with that said, uh, Mayor, we have presented to you all of the pieces that uh, are in place that we have been working over these past January to today, May 12th. And uh, uh, we will be continuing to work over the next 12 days uh, to be ready for the presentation on um, 4 o'clock on the 26th. Are there any questions? Yes, sir.
Brother Pat, in your presentation back to the OPEB, you mentioned just um, a few minutes ago, you said the money is there. It's uh, it's in the 18 budget that like you already three, approved. Three million. Yes. Now, what's, what's the source of that? <coughs> The three million. Um, I, I, that was a. Uh, um, fund. It's in the it's in the risk fund. Yeah. And and that's been there for how long? This in this budget just since we. So it was just that three million was just created in this budget year. In this budget year, and we proposed it to you all, and it was approved. So where where how was it generated? I can't answer how how the three million was generated. Um, he's asking how was the three million in risk management generated? Because it wasn't there last budget. But no, it's, but it's there now. Yeah, so. I mean it, it. It could be many ways that we created it. Um, That's what I'm curious. How? how yeah, was she's going to try to speak. I, to it. It I can't see it. Aside from fund balance, I, it seems like in the reading catching up on the city right. that there was a fund balance was. allocation previously years ago. And yes. So now we are looking to create that trust. Right. So, so when you say a fund, you you mean um, that the funds were over their necessary limit, and the three million came from from that fund balance. Yeah, I believe it was a designation from the general fund fund balance. Right. Okay. We so can look at that. When did that designation occur? I don't know. That's what I was yeah, we can we can research that. I can't answer that standing okay. here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we can get that for you. Have it for you tomorrow. Did you have a question? No. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah. In an earlier conversation that you and I were having today, you had mm -hmm. mentioned that our financial policies are somewhat dated and that yes. you're working on that. Yes. you want to share that with Council Yes, I can, and I'll, I'll uh, yield to Mrs. Uh, Seward if, if necessary. But what we uh, continuously do is, is look at all aspects of um, finance and uh, policies, procedures, and um, making sure everything is up to date. Uh, and in line with um, things that may have changed uh, through um, federal or state or whatever guidelines we may be under. And we have found that we have uh, many financial policies. Uh, we uh, met with our financial advisors on, on this past Wednesday uh, pertaining to um, those policies that must be updated. And we are going to be bringing those forward to you uh, hopefully by the end of April 1st of May. Some of them are policies, there are some policies that um, a, uh, the city manager has the latitude to sign and put into effect. However, what I said um, to our team is that all of the financial policies, I want to bring to you members of council because I would like for those to be in place into perpetuity, uh, not being that some, you know, one else comes and they are changed. If they are going to be changed, then it would have to come before council um, in order to um, get them changed. But those that we're looking at right now were signed by city managers of previous years and some date back until 2004, 2007. Uh, but we're looking to update and be where we are supposed to be with every aspect of what we do as it pertains to policies and procedures. So we, we have did a team. This year, kind of with our retirement board and those policies. Yes, so you remember we came and updated all line. of those. And it's so much that we can't just do it all at one time. But we got that correct, came before you, you approved it. And now we are working on um, looking at a broad group of financial policies. Okay? Good. Any other questions? Do we have any other? Mayor, with that said, this continue, This um, ends the presentation for this evening. All right. Well, this is completes our agenda tonight. Yes, sir. Another question is for IT. Mm -hmm. uh, for the presentation and documents. Mm -hmm. You did a good job. The yes, presentations sir. and documents that we receive um, at our work sessions and at council meetings, we're not able to print those out nor to uh, transfer. How can you create those so that they could be printed out or transferred if we need to go back and review? Because I believe after this week, these documents go away from our box. No. They're archived. Okay, so how can, how can we print them out if, or transfer if we need to? 
they they can either be emailed to your email and printed from as a normal email would be done, transferred to a flash drive or a thumb drive, printed in the same as type attachment. of manner as an attachment. Yeah. Or I, I get with you because I don't see that function on your thing. Uh, on my computer. Oh, you mean printed directly from box. your iPad? Right. Like if I'm on my iPad, I'm viewing. I want to print it out, okay. or if I want to send if you're, it. If you're printing directly from the iPad, you have to have an iOS print capable printer to okay. print that. That so, prints it through Wi-Fi. So so it's a way you can create the document so that it can be printed right from the iPad without having that? No. When it comes from an iPad, it has to be a specially designed printer to accept that over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. How about forwarding it? If I need to forward Oh, yeah. It. If you need to forward that document, you would just type out the email and attach it. And I'll, I'll get with you. I'll use the show me because I, I don't see that font. Okay. He yeah. can share. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Again, I thank everybody for taking the time out of their Saturday and participating in the um, retreat that we had. I thought it was really, really good. And it was great that we had uh, full attendance on both bodies. Yeah. We will adjourn and reconvene at 5 o'clock tomorrow.